Hello and welcome to another video with me, Steve England Outdoor Learning. I'm here at Stoke Park in Bristol and this is a place where I've spent all my life over 55 years here. When I was a child back in the 1970s, late 80s, behind me were 40 foot elm trees all the way along here. That was until a disease come along and wiped out all the elm trees, the Dutch elm disease. Well, 40 years later, there's another fungal pathogen sweeping through the country at the moment that's really having an impact on our ash trees. So we're gonna go in the woodlands now and we're gonna find out what's going on. Let's go. And here we go. This is a juvenile ash tree. So how do you identify a juvenile ash? Well, let's start off with the bark, first of all. Can you see it's got like a green tinge to it? This is how juvenile ash bark starts off. And as they mature, they go more woody and gnarly. But if you look at the ash tree leaf, can you see you have opposing leaves, opposite leaves and one at the top? This is an ash tree leaf. And the ash dieback has only been discovered in the UK since 2012. It was accidentally brought over here from Asia through ash tree saplings. And being a fungal pathogen, it's airborne. So it's really difficult to, to stop. But what are the symptoms? Well, if you have a look at this one here, just so, can you see you've got all these blemishes on the bark just here? All these, all these lesions on the bark. So if you see anything like this, we've got these brown lesions on, then you've got ash dieback coming in. Uh, here's a slightly larger sapling just here. And looking at it, it's not showing any symptoms of the ash dieback. However, let's go and see if we can find a larger tree that has all the symptoms of ash dieback. Wow, look at this one. This one's gone over. Even a mature ash like this is no problem for the ash dieback disease. And you can see it here, can't you? And if I grab some of the wood, look how soft the wood's gone. The fungus can break it down no problem. Ash trees are a hard wood. But like I said, to a fungal pathogen, they're nothing. So what does that leave me as a bushcrafter and a woodsman? Well, it leaves me with super dry firewood. And this here is exactly what I need to make fire. I'm gonna cut a piece off now, and we're gonna make a fire using nothing but the ash dieback wood and anything that's growing on the ash tree itself. So I'm going to cut this one off. Like that. So my mission is can I make a fire with the ash dye back from this and a mushroom that I can see over there growing on the tree. Well, let's go and find out. These are the King Alfred's fungi or King Alfred's cake mushrooms. And these are used to light fire. So my challenge is can I light a fire by only using what you see in front of me with my fire striker. I got some that send sparks out. Well, first of all, I need to check these mushrooms to see if they're dead or not. So I'm gonna cut one off so I can get them. I'm gonna use my lips because to sense whether they're, yeah, that's dry enough. That's a good one. And again, with this one. Yeah, they're super light, which tells me they've got no water on them. So these are good candidates for lighting a fire so what i need to do is get my piece of ash dieback wood and my knife and all i have to do is make some scrapings like so you see what i'm going to do so what i want to do with my knife is i'm going to run my blade flat down i'm going to apply pressure to it and start taking some very fine scrapings off you see the curly scrapings coming off you see all this lot that's what i want but I need quite a few of them. All I need to do now is with my fire striker, my ferrous rod, which sends out really hot sparks. These sparks are so hot they can ignite things. All I'm going to do is place it down onto my King Alfred's cake mushroom like that and shower it with some sparks like so and now you can see 
Because the mushroom is so dry, it'll hold a spark. Now, I'm gonna put my kindling on the top, like that. My dry kindling on the top, I'm just gonna rest it. I'm gonna put this on the top as well, like so. All I'm gonna do is force the oxygen into the kindling now. There we have fire. By using a mushroom from the ash tree, using ash wood with ash dieback disease. So what is the situation in terms of the law with the ash dieback disease? Well, as you can see behind me, this tree here has been left in situation. The reason being, it's not on a main public footpath, so it's not presenting a uh, danger to the public. So it's gonna be left here. All the trees here, that have been aligned all the way along the public footpaths have been felled to protect people's safety. So landowners only have the responsibility of protecting the public safety. They don't have to cut them down in the middle of the woods, they can be left. But anywhere that you guys see them, that's on a public footpath and they present a danger, then the probability is they will be felled. So one of the ways that we can help reduce the spread of the ash dieback disease is with our tools. So my knife has been cutting through timber with ash dieback and the probability I will have the fungal spores on my knife. Now if I went to cut a tree that does not have the symptoms of ash dieback, the probability is I'm going to pass the fungal spores on to that tree, therefore uh, passing the fungal disease on. When I get back home this knife will be sterilised. I always sterilise my tools and this is one of the ways that I can contribute to reducing the spread of the pathogens. If you guys are using any loppers or pruners, just be mindful that you'll have the pathogens on them. So do clean them off after, and be mindful if you're gonna chop into a tree that does not have the ash dieback. And especially if you've been chopping one with your pruners or your knives or your secateurs that are showing symptoms of ash dieback, don't go to a tree that does not have it because you will pass the fungal pathogen on. The Forestry Commission have a tree alert service. So if any of you guys see any trees that are showing symptoms of ash dye black, please report it on the link below the screen and get in touch with them and they'll come out and they'll assess the situation and then they'll take it from there. Well, there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video on the ash dye black and thanks for joining me, Steve England Outdoor Learning. And uh, I'll see you guys on another adventure another time.